Does it seem as though chaos envelops your world? Are you tired, longing for peace? Yahweh provides a way through His Scripture and provides helpful stepping stones on your path. Quiet Strength will introduce a strategy that can help. Wendy Klaus discusses creative ways to put goals into action, encourages stretching exercises to relieve tension, and helps you to apply them to your daily lifestyle. Join me as we uplift one another, learn new tactics, and bring Scripture into this chaotic world to help us find that quiet strength. And a good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at. And my name is Wendy Larson, and this is Quiet Strength. I hope you are doing well today. It is a very, very windy day here today. High winds here in the mountain, but I am very cool, much cooler wearing a sweatshirt today where it's been a beautiful, beautiful week. Uh, feels like it has gotten cooler. I pray that the weather is um, nice where you're at. I know some areas, though, are getting lots of rain and there's flooding. There's, uh, I understand, been tornadoes. Um, wow. My prayers go out to you if you are in any of these areas. Um, whenever I read uh, about any of the destruction out there, I stop and I pray, pray for the, for the people. And if I'm thinking of anyone else who's, uh, who might, I might know of who's in the area, I definitely pray for you by name and lift you up in prayer. So I hope you're doing well. I hope and pray that all is well with you. I love the verse that says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so may we rejoice in today. Well, today in Quiet Strength, doing something a little different. I learned a recipe some maybe two years ago. I went to the rest a restaurant with my daughter and, and uh, ordered like a refresher drink. And they had this um, drink that was called a grapefruit um, juice with infused with rosemary. I absolutely loved that drink. And so um, being here in Arizona, um, there are so many people giving away the grapefruit from their trees and that came back. And then outside on, in our land, we have lots of rosemary growing. And I thought, you know, I'm going to learn how to make that. So I did. And I thought, I'm going to share that with everybody. So I have a video of uh, sharing this drink with you. It's a nice, cool drink for the spring and for the summer. And if you have fresh rosemary, have access to it, and fresh grapefruit, what a wonderful drink it is. But before we go into that, I would like to welcome you to Messianic Lamb Video Network. And if you are new and uh, have coming in on MessianicLambRadio.com, you will see the our program on the screen. If you scroll down on the screen, you will see a banner which gives us an update on um, books that some of our teachers have written, uh, some of the new programs that are starting. It's awesome. And then if you scroll down further, it's just like one of the old TV guides uh, that we used to use. And you can look on the day, such as today being Thursday, and you can scroll down and you can see what programs have played already and what programs are going to be playing after Quiet Strength. And if you uh, look further, you'll see Uncensored News with John Craig. He is on this evening. Um, 
I think it's on Tuesday. There are there's another uncensored news, and that's with Dinah Die. So if that is something you are very interested in listening to, uncensored news, uh, come on in and join uh, them in the their program, and you can get uh, updated information. Also, I'd like to point out that if you get up early in the morning, you are an early bird, then uh, here in Arizona, because it's 530 this time, but it's 830 on the eastern coast, we have our war prayer room. And our war prayer room is wonderful. It is such an encouragement anytime and every time that I go and am part of the war prayer room. It is Leave after we we are finished praying, I leave uplifted. What a blessing. What a total, total blessing it is to be able to join the war prayer room. We have different people Sunday through Friday, and we read prayer requests. Uh, if you want to come on over to uh, Messianic Lamb, uh, radio.com and click on submit prayers and then go to the public prayer list. Uh, you'll be able to see how you can submit prayer requests as well. We'll be glad to pray for you, pray for your family, pray for uh, if you wanted to just say, you know, I just need prayer. We'll be glad to pray for you. So with that, I hope you can join us Sunday through Friday. Uh, 5.30 at my time, and but it's 8.30 Eastern time. So I hope you can join us in the prayer room. We'd love to see you. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Uh, I was trying to see if anyone came in and wanted to say hi. You're welcome to say hi. Bob, if you're listening on the road, I uh, want to let you know I think of you. Pray for you and Cece as you're traveling. It is uh, definitely not a safe place in many of our cities anymore. And so we definitely need to pray. So much going on. So much happening. And it seems like the world is just going off in chaos. But, you know, that's what the program is all about, quiet strength. And this is where we get our strength in Yahuwah our Elohim. We get our strength by coming to him in prayer. So if you would, let's begin quiet strength today with prayer. Heavenly Father, hallowed be your holy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, I I think of so much that's going on. We have so many storms that are going through cities and towns and, and devastations happening. You know this. But you, you ask us to come and bring our burdens to you. Father, we have so much injustice that's going on. We have laws being passed where our children are being harmed. Father, we... We have uh, leaders placed in leadership who, uh, who are trying to bring more and more oppression on us, on the people here in every nation. Father, we have so much uh, going against Israel, your people, uh, us. We pray, Father, we pray for your intervention. We pray for um, your strength, your protection, your help, your counsel. We pray for boldness. Oh, Father, we just pray that you would help us during this time. And when we pull off to the side, we, we think about Yeshua, your son, 
And he would, when the crowd was huge and he would pull out and go and have his quiet time with you. Father, may we learn that also. For this is where we receive quiet strength. By coming and spending time in prayer, talking with you. And drawing strength to be able to stand. To be able to have your, your shalom in our life, in our spirits. And we can then share with others. So, Father, we thank you for being with us. I pray that you would bless this time. And everyone who comes and listens to this program, Father, I, I pray that you would speak to their heart through the Bible study that we're doing at this time. And, Father, that you would give me the words to say And that you would be glorified through what is said and done. I thank you, Father. Thank you so much for each person who's coming in and maybe not, maybe if not listening now, but listening later. And those who are listening now, Father, I pray for them. I pray that wherever they're at, you would give them their quiet strength. They would seek you with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for being with us and guiding us and directing us. We give you all these things. Thank you, Father. Amen. And amen. All right. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and begin with this little video. I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. I'm going to add it to the stream. This is Wendy, and this is Quiet Strength. And today, I thought I could show you how to make a nice cool drink for the summertime and it's called a grapefruit rosemary um, refresher drink and uh, so let's get started I welcome thank you for joining today and I hope this is something that you can use and uh, I love the taste all you need is your uh, grapefruit. I'm also going to add a lemon because I like to add a uh, lemon to my grapefruit. You will need fresh um, rosemary. I went and picked this today, picked it and washed it from my yard. I have it growing outside all over the place. It's so exciting. I just love the smell of it. If you just put it up and you just said, uh, I'll tell you here in just a few minutes what rosemary uh, does and how it benefits you and your body and uh, to make the syrup uh, we have water and we have um, I put honey the recipe calls for sugar but I like to put honey in instead of the sugar all right, let's begin. So what you need, let's begin with the syrup. You need three-fourths cup of water. Now, um, I'm using, I'm doubling my um, recipe, so I already have some three-fourths cup in there. And then I'm going to pour another three-fourths cup in there. And let's get that to boiling. While that is boiling, I'd like to share with you some of the benefits of the items that we're going to be using. Let's start off with rosemary. I have this book, I just bought it, it's called The Herbal Apothecary. 
and I'm just so excited. I'm going to start using it because uh, I'm getting herbs growing this summer, and I'm so excited to be able to learn and apply this to uh, our health, mine and Kurt's health. And I do have a friend down the street, and she loves to, to learn also. We're learning together. So it's awesome. So what does rosemary do and what are the benefits? Well, according to this book, rosemary thrives in damp, cooler climates and treats the illnesses associated in these environments. So this rosemary will treat uh, whatever um, illnesses that we have up here in the mountain. So this is really good to know. Organs or systems affected. Uh, so the brain is going to be affected, the heart, intestines, and your lungs. Um, these are therapeutic actions. These are going to be anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, astringent, carminative, diaphoretic, stimulant. And for nature, it is pungent, sweet, warm, and dry. And it is very pungent. You can smell it. Once you put it in your hand, it's just a pungent smell. And then the plants, it consists of essential oils, tannins, resin, bitter, um, calcium, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, iron, zinc, beta carotene. So if you're low in any of those areas, maybe having a grapefruit rosemary drink just might be what your body's asking for. You never know. And the flower essence, used to help find peace within for those who struggle within themselves or with others. I can say that, you know, for me, I, I look at that and go, hmm, I, you know, the only, the only person, and I'm not sure if we should say that Yahuwah is a person. He, he created man. And so the only entity, maybe, I don't know, I hope I am not stepping on anybody's toes or offending anyone, but we cannot put Yahuwah and Yeshua in the category of human beings because they created man. Genesis chapter 1, let us make man in our image. So they are not man. They are our creators. And so our creators placed us here on this earth. And they are the only ones who can bring us that shalom, that deep peace within. Now, just by smelling this, it is a more like, wow, I feel like it opens up my sinuses. And I just feel like it is a calming type of smell. So if that's what it gives you, um, then that maybe you can use it as such. All right. You can use rosemary as a medicinal use. It supports heart and cardiovascular system. Rosemary has been cited endlessly for its positive benefits on the heart and cardiovascular system. It is considered the ideal heart herb because it is toning and cleansing. And that's great news for me because I do have heart palpitations. So this rosemary is going to be really good for that. I'm learning as I read. Isn't that wonderful? So my water is boiling. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And uh, now I'm going to take my one cup. It takes half a cup of sugar. So because I'm doubling my recipe, it's one cup. And so I'm just going to push that in there. And there we go. Now I'm going to stir this. And my honey is going to melt within the water. It's just gonna um, just melt. So as I stir. So and I'm going to go ahead and um, this. So as I stir, I will continue to read. Let's see what else. 
Many clinicians have used it specifically for cardiac edema. Didn't know that. Noting its ability to move out stuck fluid. Wow, I had no idea about that. So the only thing is people get so excited about the medicinal and the, the benefits of our herbs and, and uh, that we eat and the plants. And, and sometimes we overdo it. So um, if you, this is something that you want to try and use and you have that heart issue, I would go and get the physician's permission first and I would talk to someone who has a medical background. This is only, this is only educational purposes. And as in, when it comes to someone who has a major medical issues, I would not stop anything or, and then start this. I would not and do not. Okay, you need to go and see your doctor and you need to see what and how you can bring this into your life so that you can have this as a health benefit and not something that's going to cause death or, um, or a lifetime um, sickness for you. Okay, so this is only for education. This is not medical. Okay. I'm not medical. I'm just reading a book. <laughs> All right. I just want to make that clear. All right, for everyone. Here we go. And uh, this removal of stagnated buildup extends to the extremities, stimulating the nerves and vessels along the way, opening up positive blood flow and decreasing cold sensations, muscle stiffness, and inflammation due to oxygen deprivation. And it also balances blood sugars. Rosemary helps balance blood sugars in the body. It increases the breakdown of sugars and carbohydrates, improving metabol metabolism and reducing the highs and lows of fluctuating blood sugar levels. This is helpful for uh, dysglycemia and the symptoms that accompany it including irritability, dizziness, and fatigue. Again, this is only from a book. This is not medical advice. This is information that you can bring and ask your doctor about. All right, here we go. And then it helps warm the body, and it goes on. Rosemary stimulates, motivates, and warms bodily systems. It making it helpful for those who feel cold all the time and have cold hands and feet. Weakness or lacking the heat driving forces necessary for the body can occur when vessels are constricted and unable to drive blood to a warm area. The result is slower reactions and poor physical function. Using rosemary in such situations is effective at warming up and stimulating the overall metabolic state and then as it goes on it says it stimulates hair follicles so for, I have a friend who asked me for rosemary last year and that was the first time I had heard that it stim stimulates hair follicles and so for women who have uh, hair that's maybe falling out due to medicine or something this might be something you can look into making a do-it-yourself remedy for putting on the hair and on the head. Sadie. Scotty. Okay. Rosemary oil can be used on the scalp to stimulate hair follicles for potential growth. This is an old remedy, but not outdated. Massage it into the scalp for two to five minutes once per day. And contrain dication, dictations. Those with hypertension should avoid rosemary. So if you have hypertension, do not use rosemary. All right, and then they have, you know, a, a little recipe here. But I'm using this recipe as something that we can be part of a drink, and just the taste of it is wonderful. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you 
This is what uh, my first batch came out as. This one's going to be higher because I doubled my batch. And then uh, once this is made, we will pour it in our um, juice. Now, let's make our juice. I already did half of a grapefruit. I'm going to do another half of a grapefruit. There you go. And you want fresh. Fresh is better. So if you can buy grapefruit or you have access to a grapefruit tree, this is awesome. So what you're going to do is I have my trusty um, And a juice, my juicer. It's an extension to my blender. Okay, mixer. Sorry, I want to call it blender. I don't know why. And so I'm going. I'm making myself some grapefruit juice. Now you can reuse these vines also. Once you squeeze your uh, grapefruit. We can cut up these rinds and use them either in compost or you can use them, I think if you cut them up real small, I saw a YouTube, um, just a small Instagram YouTube thing, and it showed how you can just put the small pieces in your garden and that will help keep the aphids away. So I'm trying that in our garden, and uh, we will see how it turns out. I will let you know if it helped or if it didn't help, and I'll be really upset if it doesn't because I'll be in big trouble <laughs> for doing that. All right, here we go. Now my lemon. go. So our juice is made. With that, I have my glass and I just have this little insert here. It's going to go up here. And here is my juiced items and I'll use my spoon just to kind of move it around and set aside you now some people just don't like to do this kind of stuff but to me I don't mind it it I don't know Sort of like baking bread. It's uh, therapeutic. <laughs> Don't know why. It just is. Helps me get away from noise, TV, things of the world that are interrupting things. Oh, sorry about my dogs. This time they seem to be really barking a lot, so I, I uh, apologize ahead of time for that. So I have my juice that I've started and I'm going to just set this aside because I'll finish this here in a little bit but I have my juice here I put a little bit of this um, seltzer water because I like a seltzer type taste and I put a little bit of cold water from my refrigerator and now I'm going to put in probably about a tablespoon probably two tablespoons I'm just going to eye it There we go. And we're going to stir. And if you want to, oh, with your, um, your syrup, you want to take your rosemary and you're going to put it in there. Put about three sprigs in. And if you want, you can put your rosemary also in here. Uh, this was infused with rosemary. And I'm going to put a top on it once I find it. And put that 
um, and let that sit. And when you're done, you can enjoy a nice, cool, refreshing drink. Oh, it's delicious. May you enjoy, if you can have, I should say, hopefully you can have a nice tall glass of grapefruit infused rosemary drink this spring, this summer, on a hot summer day. Shalom Aleichem everyone and be blessed. All right, let's see if I can remove this. Okay, got got back on. <laughs> I do apologize for my dogs barking. I didn't realize how loud they came across. Um, and so hopefully next time I may just put them in a different part of the house so that when they do bark, it's not going to be very, very loud. And as you can see, here comes Scotty. <laughs> wagging his tail <laughs> coming down the stairs you probably heard him too <laughs> all right with that i hope you i hope that helped you uh with uh coming up with another i don't know recipe that uh can provide a nice cool drink a lot of people like lemonade here we have uh grapefruit juice infused with the rosemary sprigs and uh i will have to say i like that taste that the rosemary gives to that grapefruit juice all right so i hope that's something you can use with that let's go into our little bible study we had started the book of ruth because we are counting the omar and um I believe what I have been reading is the book of Ruth is what is uh, read during the Omer time and Shabi Walt time. What better uh, time of the season to begin studying and reading? So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, my slide to the um, screen here and just go over what we talked about last time we talked about wheat and barley harvest beginning uh at the beginning of the hebraic i believe hebraic calendar year and uh the reason why the book of ruth is pretty much read um i don't know if it's just something that everybody does but it's those who do it is due to when it the story begins and when ruth 1 22b it says they arrived in bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest and with that we took a look at the background where is and when is the book of ruth uh, a time period and about where and so uh, we find that the verse says it came to pass in the days of Judges. And thinking about Judges, wow, that makes me think of the book of Judges. So uh, it is a consensus that the story of Ruth is around the time of one of the uh, times in Judges. And they believe most likely it was during the time that um, I think um I'm trying to see here um who was the king in Moab at the time it was when King Eglon of Moab was uh, in uh in power and uh and I'm gonna say that for a reason, and we'll come to that later. Whether we get to it today <laughs> or next week, uh, there's a reason why I say it's during that time. And so we find out that it is, uh, we talked a little bit about where it's at. It's in Bethlehem, that's in Judah, and how um, Elimelech took his family over to Moab during because what was happening, right, there was a um, famine at the time in Bethlehem, wasn't there, in that area. And most likely Moab wasn't having one, was it? It was good land. 
uh, we learned a little bit about uh, the relationship between um, Judah and Moab, and they it was a time of oppression. Uh, and we find that the relationship really hasn't changed today, has it? Because we're seeing a lot of unrest in, in the book, in the area. And looking at the map, when we look at the map, we see that Edom, Moab, and Ammon are part of Jordan. And that's why I mentioned Jordan being um, not in good relationship with um, with Israel at this time. So we looked at verse uh, 1. And so we're now going to look at verse 2 because I don't know if we talked. I don't remember if we talked about names and the meaning of names. We all have uh, our names that mean uh, have a meaning to it. And hopefully you were able to look up what your meaning is for your name. And some people say these meanings have a lot to do with who we are, our character. Others say it doesn't. I fall in the category where I believe it does. And when I named my children uh, when they were born, uh, it meant a lot to me that they had to have names that, um, and I prayed and I asked the Lord, Please place upon my heart, lead me to a name that um, for this child, because uh, names do have meanings, and sometimes we do live up to the name of our meaning, uh, the meaning of our name. <laughs> All right, here you go. In Ruth chapter 1, verse 2, it says, The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and his two sons were named Malon and Chilion. And we find that Elimelech means my God is king. And we find that he is relative of Boaz and he was of the family of the Hezronites. But according to rabbi, uh, a rabbi, Elimelech, uh, Salmon, the father of Boaz, Pel Peloni, Almoni, and the father of Naomi were the sons of Nashan ben Amenadab. This is according to rabbinic uh, research and background. And they say that Elimelech was one of the chiefs of Israel and that his premature death was his punishment for having left the Holy Land and having settled in the land of Moab. So that's very interesting. And thinking about... Um, verses that talk about not leaving Israel and not returning back to Egypt. And even though this is not Egypt, this was Moab, this is still a land full of idolatry. And it's a land that they had um, wars on previously and were victorious over. And so, um, so to go back to that is somewhat spiritual in my mind. I, I think of it as being spiritual because there's one thing when the Lord, when we cross over and come to our Israel, to Israel, we are Israelites. We are grafted in, as Paul says. And then because of maybe a famine in our own life, hard times come we start looking over and seeing that the grass is greener over there where all the idols are and where uh, wickedness is happening. And even though we can't see it spiritually, per se, um, we think it's better. So we decide to go back, you know. And we, we, I've always heard that term as backsliding growing up backsliding to that lifestyle we were once in and then coming back. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Then we have Naomi. Naomi, which is pronounced Noomi, 
Naomi, which I found out in researching her name. Naomi comes from the root nam, N-A-M, which means pleasant, contentment, and happiness. But the biblical Naomi, who is aware of meaning of the meaning of her name, points out the conflict between her name and her life. So she took her name and the meaning of her name pretty seriously, didn't she? And because we find this because she requests when she goes back to Israel, she tells her family and friends, I am Naomi. I am not Naomi. Please, my name is changed to Mara, meaning bitter, because her life had become bitter, hadn't it? She lost her husband. She had lost her two sons. So um, we see that in Ruth 120. Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Then we look at her son's names. Mahlan, Mah Mah uh, either forgiveness or dissipation and profan profanation. And uh, Let's look at the word dissip dissipation. It means a sinking to a state of low moral standards and behavior. And the other word that is used to describe his name was profanation, the, an act of great disrespect shown to God or to sacred ideas, people, or things. So we see here... When the scripture says that both of the sons were, I believe there's a, one of the scriptures that says both of the sons were, uh, did not walk with the Lord. We can see through this name that he sunk to a low moral state, apparently, or possibly. Uh, he showed disrespect to Yahuwah. And then we see the name Chilion, which means destruction. And Again, that is also just an insight as to what scripture describes the young, the men to be. And then we also find in Ruth 1, 2, that they, they're called Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. Who are and what are Ephratites? Well, uh, who are Ephratites? They were descendants of Ephrath, who lived in or around the city of Bethlehem, which was called Ephrath. So now you know, anytime you read scripture and it's referring to the Ephratites, you understand now that they are descendants of Ephrath. Ephrath was the second wife of Caleb, son of Hezron, son of Perez, son of Judah. And I found this post. It was pretty cool how this lady laid out the, the family ancestry. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but it's pretty, pretty neat. And um, I think it's pretty straightforward on how it all comes together. So Ephrath means fruitful. And from her name, it is uh, the ancient name for Bethlehem. And we find this in Genesis 48, 7. Genesis 35, 19 says, So Rachel died and she was buried on the way to Ephrath. So we see that Ephrath was the name before it became the name Bethlehem. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Some pretty neat insight that we can glean as we study our scripture right? And then the next verse, Ruth 1, 2b through 4, it reads, they came to the region of Moab and remained there. Then Naomi's husband, Emelech, died. So she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women. One was named Orpah, and the second was named Ruth, and they dwelt there about 10 years. So I have the word remained. They, when they came to Moab, they all remained there. They didn't up and leave after a year or two to go back and see if Israel um, came, came out of the, um, the famine, did they? 
And in doing so, we find Elimelech dying during this time. And then the two boys, instead of which was not uh, part of the instructions, the Torah, they married Moabite women. And that was another thing that they did that was not uh, seen as good in the Lord's eyes, was it? And the names of the women are or Orpah and Ruth. And we're going to find out a little bit more about Orpah and Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. And then we see... Um, then those two, Malin and Helian, also died. So the women were left without, or the woman, meaning Naomi, was left without her children and her husband. So talking, going back to what do names mean? Orpah is a Hebrew name, which seems to derive from the Hebrew word or pa, meaning neck or stiff-necked. And due to her turning around and returning to Moab, that is what they're thinking of where that meaning came from, stiff-necked. However, it is not clear. For some scholars believe that it may also be related to the word arafa, meaning fawn. And this can be translated as having a sense of fear. So possibly Orpa was fearful. Possibly she was stiff-necked and she was maybe, um, what do they say in Revelations, like lukewarm, you know, uh, not so sure about the Israel's God, Yahuwah, and still kind of waning within her culture uh, in the gods of Moab. Then we have Ruth. Ruth is a Hebrew origin, meaning um, friend, friendship, or compassionate friend. And it is derived from the Hebrew word reut, meaning friend. So uh, we find that Ruth is, again, describing who she is. Now let's look at the number 10. It says here, 10 is a perfect number. This represents wholeness, law, discipline, and integration. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? They were there for 10 years. So this 10, could it represent um, the discipline, maybe, that the Lord might have had for this family moving from Judah from Bethlehem and Judah to Moab. It's been mentioned, the number, the 10 years, uh, or it's been mentioned a total of 242 times in the Bible, making it one of the most numbers used in scriptures. The number 10 is used to represent God's authority and his divine government in all creation. Furthermore, it's used to symbolize responsibility and obedience towards the commandments, as well as symbolizing divine judgment. So looking at that, if it's obedience towards the commandments, with the boys not marrying within Israel, and with the parents not taking them back to Israel to marry Israelite women, there the obedience was not there, was it, to... Uh, Yahuwah's instructions. And we also see it as, if it symbolizes divine judgment, uh, that might be symbolizing the judgment that Yahuwah had upon the family, possibly. So it's good background just to kind of have um, and try to understand just a little bit. So did you know that the rabbis state that Ruth was Orpah's sister? I didn't know that until I started studying this a little bit more, as well as her sister-in-law. And both were daughters of King Eglon of Moab. And this is from Ruth Rabbah uh, 
nine. And that's where I was uh, mentioning earlier. We're going to find out a little bit more about Ruth and Orpah. All right. Um, who, according to the same Midrash, was the son of Balak. So they said both were the daughters of King Eglon of Moab. And Eglon, who, going back to Eglon, was the son of Balak. So who was Balak? Wasn't he the king who wanted to um, place a curse upon Israel? I think that is right. Um, and we can look that up and make sure that that is correct. Because anytime you hear someone um, talking about scripture and doing a Bible study, you always want to make sure what they're saying is correct and biblical and scriptural. And my prayer is that what we share what we talk about in scripture is scriptural and um and i want to make sure it's of the lord and what he wants others to hear so that he can speak through his holy spirit to you this fact transforms them from simple mobile women to members of a royal family so here we have the chief possibly a chief of one of the israel's main families coming to Moab and it makes sense his sons would marry the kings a royal family correct because of that royalty nobility aspect and their lineage is significant because of David's dis, dis, uh, descent from Ruth David's Moabite origins are linked to royalty. So it just kind of brings it together, doesn't it? Don't you love those puzzle pieces coming together? Absolutely awesome. Also, did you know, and this is also from a Midrash, found it interesting. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, I guess some we will someday find this out if it is correct. But here's the... Uh, Midrash. The Babylonian Talmud identifies Orpah as the mother of Goliath based on a Midrashic reading of a passage in the book of 2 Samuel 21, 18 through 22, that describes four Philistine warriors as quote unquote sons of the giant, parentheses Harapha. The rabbis understand the word harafa not as the giant, but as a personal name of a woman, harafa, and note that it is similar to Orpa. Her name appears as harafa and as Orpa. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? The names share three out of four consonants, and this is enough for the rabbis to identify them as referring to the same person. And we go on. Each of the four sons of Harapha or Arpa are killed by David or one of his warriors. The Talmud explains that the killing of Orpah's sons by a descendant of Ruth is because Orpah's kiss to Naomi does not measure up to Ruth's act of devotion and steadfastness. Quote, and they fell into the hands of David and his servants, end of quote, as it is written. Quote, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and Ruth cleaved to her, end of quote, Ruth. 114. Rabbi Yitzhak says, the Blessed Holy One said the children of the one who kissed, for example, the four giants descended from Orpah, will come and fall into the hand of the children of the one who cleaved, referring to David and his followers. So I found that very interesting and um, something to kind of think about. We don't know if that is true, that is a midrash, but it's something that put out there to uh, just kind of glean from and look into scripture. It might make sense, might not. All right, let's go on to verse 6 and through 9. 
Then she got up along with her daughters-in-law to return from the region of Moab, because in the region of Moab she had heard that Adonai had taken note of his people and given them food. So she left the place where she was along with her daughters-in-law, and they started out on the road to return to the land of Judah. So Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go, return, each of you, to your mother's house. May Adonai show you the same kindness that you have shown to the dead and to me. May Adonai grant that you find rest, each of you, in the house of her own husband. Then she kissed him, and they wept loudly. The word return, we see that it is used four times within this passage. So as we go into the week, if you would like to, find out more about the word return. And we'll talk more about that next week. And the significance of it being mentioned four times. All right. And with that, I hope that today's Bible study was something that um, helped you in your walk. And that the Lord can use that it was a uh, maybe a seed that will grow. Maybe it helped water the seed and you will grow with more understanding with this scripture and may you also take what the lord places and teaches you and share it with those around you and with that may the lord bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you may he give you his peace And I hope and pray that you will have a blessed week and be safe. All right. And let's see. I try to make this smooth and it never happens. (laughs) So I am going to um, come back up on the screen and go ahead. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do my exit out. Shalom Aleichem, everyone. Have a blessed week. Does it seem as though chaos envelops your world? Are you tired, longing for peace? Yahweh provides a way through His Scripture and provides helpful stepping stones on your path. Quiet Strength will introduce a strategy that can help. Wendy Klaus discusses creative ways to put goals into action, encourages stretching exercises to relieve tension, and helps you to apply them to your daily lifestyle. Join me as we uplift one another learn new tactics, and bring scripture into this chaotic world to help us find that quiet strength. richly blessed to bring you what we believe is the fullest, most diverse, yet up-to-date progressive teachings, discussion, and prayer programming you can find anywhere on this planet. Be sure to take the tour of the MessianicLambRadio.com website. I'm Susan Hoogie, thanking you for joining us on the Messianic Lamb Video Network.